I have docked tool properties on this side here. And you can see here, this is where we have the painted tools as from the other tutorial. The shortcut to get the paintbrush is P. And you can see here, I can start to paint. So we need to know about brushes, I guess. If I hit the K button here, we get a pop-up version of the shelf. If I go here to Mari, say here, brush new brushes, for example. Let's take one of these old shippy. And we can see here, I can start to paint with this brush. I can go hit the K. I can take this brush. I'm just going to take another color. Yeah, go in and, and test all of these and see which one you like. And you can also here, for example, go in here and and start to play here with different settings if you want to, if you want to customize your brushes. I'm just going to clear the paint buffer, Control Shift C from the other tutorial. For example, let's take this one and play here with the spacing and see what happens. Essentially how many times it repeats the brush tip. I'm not going to go through all of these because yeah, it's a ton of them. There is a few here settings for brushes that can be interesting. Example here, steady stroke. If you put it to distance, I'm just going to take a another brush tip here. Let's take a like this one basic steady stroke. It's it's off now and I just paint. Let's turn it on. If I go here to delay, we can see like a line here after and the longer the the tail, the more it's going to even out your movement there for example let's say uh, smoothing that's even more aggressive i think this is good if you want to do something really smooth something else here that can be interesting is uh, the jitter you have both value and hue jitter and let's set this per per tip let's set it per tip it's gonna be crazy here now Let's set this no jitter and just set the jittering of the strokes. So this one can be cool. And obviously you can take it per stroke. Let's take per stroke. It's going to be every time each stroke is going to have its own jitter. And I guess you can also set here how much you want it to be able to jitter. So maybe you don't want it to be that far off. Let's jitter it the other range instead per stroke. Now it's going to be more kind of same color, but it's each stroke is going to be slightly different there. So that's something that you can play with as well. It's going to reset this back. We know about the K button. We can take different uh, brushes here. This one is kind of uh, good sometimes for like creases and stuff. We have here the R button. This one will essentially scale it and you can see it scales it here at the radius. So this is the scale of the brush. You also have, essentially, you see you can rotate the brush. It's sometimes, if you have a, a brush like this that essentially has a direction, that's something you want to do. Let's take a brush that's more evident. Let's take one of these that's kind of hard surface that has a direction. You want to paint something like streaks, or you want to paint it in this direction, then you hit a W button to rotate it. So that's something that you might want to do, for example, if you're going to streaking on, onto the object like this, for example. So this one here is a roller brush. On the roller brush, you can see here I have loaded an image. So for example, I loaded this image. Let's take another image and see what happens. I'm just going to take my texture sets. Uh, let's take this uh, creature skin here uh, that uh, the image manager i'm just gonna drag it in there and we can see here it, it starts to paint with red and that's because i have red there so let's let's make this white you can see here now i hit the, the x button now i can start to roll out yeah it, it is what it says it's a roller brush so it rolls out the texture for you so that's another way to apply it. And there's different way here too. In my case I, here now, I, I'm using RGBA. And it's this button in RGBA. But you could say you want to paint with the luminance of this. 
or you want to take one of the channels depending on what's in them. Let's take something else. Okay, so let's say, take, take green channel. There was a lot of green. Blue. Let me see, we get less details. So it's a way to specify individual channels that you essentially use as a, a stencil to paint through. And it takes the, the foreground color here. Let's take a look at the blur brush here now. And you can see here I paint and it, it starts to, to blur the paint underneath where it is. What happens is it takes a screen grab of your textures then essentially revert it back to the paint buffer. Because you can see here it essentially lives now on like a sheet of glass on top of it and you project it back. So it's important to know what Mari is. It's a paint buffer based paint engine. Once you have projected something down, it essentially lives on the object. You can't directly alter the pixels. So it has to lift it up to the paint buffer. You blur it onto the paint buffer and then it essentially you can project it back. So it looks like it's blurred. So yeah, that, that's important to understand. So you can see here, if I now move it, it essentially has lifted the paint onto the paint buffer and blurred it. And then you can project it back. Paint buffer eraser. So that, that's what it says. If I paint something, you essentially want to erase. You can hit the E button or go here to the eraser. And it will erase it from the paint buffer as this is a paint buffer based painting tool. You will erase before you have projected it down. Okay, so vector painting. I can't say that I'm an expert in vector painting. I barely used it. I, I just played around with it a bit and it's very specialized. You need special shaders and yeah, uh, but we can just quickly look at an example so you can get a feel what you can do with it. So essentially you can paint directions and vectors. I believe it's mainly used for, for example, simulating like flow, water or direction of fur and stuff. It's quite convoluted and hard to understand what, what's actually happening. Uh, first off here, I'm just going to create a paint node. I'm just going to here create a vector and just say oh, OK here. And looking at this here, the paint node, I have this vector brush here, vector painting. And you can see here it generates, depending on what direction I move this mouth, you see it, it creates different rotation, almost like a a normal map but for vectors so up and down left right creates different and you can essentially hook this up to a in my case here a flow node here without this input here it doesn't do anything but when i pipe this in here it starts to essentially animate here you can uh, set here repeat and animation if you want to have it animated or not. Now, as you see here, when I start to paint here, you see I can essentially start to warp and deform. And you can use this animation here to kind of simulate, let's say that you have like a waterfall or something. And you want to, something like the water to travel along. And this is kind of the extent of, of the usage that I have done. I, I tried it once on a, uh, a horse to simulate like a fake fur direction. And that's something you can do, but it, it's quite hard to set it up in uh, the render engine and get everything uh, in, in the right place for this to work properly. I guess some pipelines might have uh, better tooling for this, but yeah, I've never really used this in production, to be honest. And next up here in this section is the paint through tool. You can see it here. If I hit the U button, I get this lovely tool. It's a paint through tool. What can we do with this one? So from the image manager, you can drag any image you want to paint with. Let's say that you want to apply cow skin on, on top of this. You can do that. So you drag it in and you get this essentially like rectangle here. And you can, with the shift button, you can move this from left to right up and down. Shift control, it will zoom in and out. It will become larger or smaller. and only control will start to rotate this so with this combination of keystrokes you can now start to 
essentially paint this. So you have this this sheet laying on top of, of your, your model here and you can start to paint. You can also here, while you're in the paint through tool, hit the K and, and take a brush strip. So you can essentially use the paint through tool in combination with brushes as well. And the brushes will reveal the paint through tool, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's up to you what, what type of brush, if you want a, a soft one or is the, the linear or the worm it's just gonna be depending on how it will reveal the paint through tool when it reaches the end it essentially cuts off and that's something that you can control here from the toolbars up here so you have this repeat here and now it will essentially if you have a tileable image it will start to repeat this image when it reach this line then start to fill in with this content so this is a tileable so it tiles left and right and up and down now it will look like it's essentially covering the whole paint buffer next one here gradient it is just that it's a kind of similar to the paint through tool except it's it's a gradient that you can somewhat control here from this the top bar here for example you have a radial gradient you can uh, grade the in and out point here you can control uh, the different colors if you for example want to have a red and green and it will as in the paint through tool project it on top of your painting buffer here as you can see it will just project what it sees from the gradient the last here, the clone stamp. It's a bit like the blur brush, but it actually clones features. With the control, you essentially select the area they want to clone from, and then you start to paint. It will lift it onto the, the paint buffer. And you can see now this is essentially living like a level above the, the object. From uh, If you don't move the object, it will look like you're essentially cloning straight with the paint, but we are actually lifting paint from the paint buffer. Let's take this warp here, for example, if I just make a, um, a marquee here, you will start to deform the paint that you have laid out using this warp grid here. There's this plus and minus. If, if I hit the plus, it will, you will get more points so you can localize the formations, if that makes sense. Let's do it again. I'm just gonna do this it's usually better to have it bigger than the the paint you want to deform and we can see here with the with the plus and minus we can set up the grid let's say that we want to move these points and it kind of anchors these ones because the grid here is limiting the how much this will deform so the denser the grid the more limiting the deformation will be become the slurp brush is more like you deform with the brush. So this is when I project stuff and I want to micro smudge. This is usually a brush I take. Uh, I want to follow the form or, or something or maybe change the, the pattern here. This one also have a few modes here. You have grow. That's super weird. It's like bullshit. You have shrink. It will start to pinch it. Rotate. That's let's let's do this again i'm just gonna ro do this and let's take this and with the rotate it will essentially start to slowly rotate whatever paint you have almost like a twirl or tornado type <laughs> so yeah um what else erase let's see here so if i rotate and then we want to erase it will essentially revert it back. If you've gone mad, you can erase it back to whatever state you had in the beginning there. And next here, the pinup. And this one is a bit like you drop down with a shift key, you drop down different pins. And this is essentially almost like limiting features where the pins are. So if I hit this one, it, you will see it will start to retain 
where you have drop down pins so you can essentially limit the effect of something and the more pins you have the more stable it will be around that region so they're almost like magnets yeah sometimes this can be good if you want to do local warping of some paint you, you set up a border perimeter and then you start to move them around the toe brush it's a bit similar to clone but you essentially do this you draw a region and and then you can move it around instead of cloning you essentially this one is gonna be really good to okay you want to have a feature there want to have these ones over there for example just to isolate portions of features and details and just drag them around instead of cloning so this one is i usually use this one over cloning actually it still is living onto the paint buffer as the other tools so you have you need to bake it down yeah and and that kind of concludes these paint and paint buffer tools